There you are. You boys ready? Of course. What else do you know about this guy? Not much, just he's some slick little greasy-haired European who's clearly got power and money. Now, listen. If we go in there and start shooting up the place, the boy's gonna get shot, that I guarantee. Better like this, you're gonna have a lot of protection. Hey, no one gonna get shot, Arthur, so everyone just relax. We'll charm them. Trust me. This the place. <clears throat> <clears throat> Must be. You okay, John? I guess. Excuse me, sir. We have an appointment to see Mr. Bronte. Who are you? <clears throat> you get your boss down here and now so we can talk about this like gentlemen. <clears throat> Run along now, boy. Is that the special Dutch charm I heard so much about? Relax. I got this. I don't know if that was me. I would have. I would have. I would have killed this guy for sure. 100. percent Look at him. Don't worry, boys. We come in peace. We just need yeah. to straighten a couple of things out with your boss. Need some moisturization. He's so much faster than me, dude. Nathan. Chi sono sti buffoni? Sono qui per picciotto. Coi soldi? Why do you take his son? Excuse me. I said, why did you take his son. We ain't got no problems with you, sir. Nor you with us. But if you want to start one, there's going to be a lot of folks dead in this room before it's done. So, you walk into my city, stinking of shit and looking like this, and you come into my house before you have a bath and you tell me how to act? You ask me to show compassion. Have I not shown you almost infinite compassion already by simply allowing you to breathe in my presence? Indeed you have. Now, we are simple country folk. All we have is each other. And you have gone and you have took his son over some dispute with some inbred ex-slavers, it ain't got nothing to do with any one of us. You had nothing to do with destroying the liquor business! We was innocent bystanders. And that which we weren't innocent of, well, we... we most surely were ignorant of. You, you, you twist words. You lie shamelessly. You think you are better than everyone else. Diodoro. <laughs> Not the best woman. Angelo Bronte. <laughs> Dutch Vanderlyn. Uh, Arthur Morgan. Arthur, uh, the pleasure is mine. John Marsh. <laughs> All mine, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can my friend have his son? Of course, of course. <laughs> But, uh, should I be out of pocket over a misunderstanding? Uh, of course I know you would not want that, huh? No. No, no, no. So, how about this? You perform a simple job for me, and you get your son back. What is it? A couple of people have taken to grave robbing in this cemetery. Well, that is a fine place for it, the best. <laughs> I love this guy. I love you. <laughs> See, they've taken not only to desecrating the dead, but they've done so without paying a tribute to the living. Thing is, they see my men, of course, they're on a mile. So maybe you two head off, huh? And you, Mr. Van der Lind, you tell me more about my manners. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Salute. Uh -huh. Come on, 
on then. Yeah. You know where the cemetery is? I think so. Pretty sure I rode by it earlier. It's real impressive. You know, you did good holding your tongue in there. Do you trust one word that comes out of that bastard's mouth? We don't even know where Jack is. Listen, we found Bronte. We got in there. Dutch is with him now. All things considered, it could have gone a lot worse. That poor kid. I ain't been a good father to him. I hope... <sighs> He's okay. He'll be fine. You okay? I figure... The Braithwaite's were gonna hold Jack Branson. For all the money we cost him. They must have sent him here so we couldn't get to him. But... Bronte knows by now there's no Braithwaite's left to pay him. Jack ain't much use to him anymore. Let's just get this done. And let Dutch handle the rest. I just hope you're right. Okay. I think this is it. Keep it down. Let's hitch your horses up ahead. There's no way to hitch my horse, bro. This way. It's not a boy. If it is a boy, why has he got 1800 nipples? Wall dogs got 18 million nipples? I never paid attention. Okay, but guns. we'll need to be quick. We can't Them go back to really good. if we had to. Let's have a look where they first shot at us from. <sighs> Robin grave robbers. We've hit the big time. It's over here. We can't go back to Bronte with nothing to choke for it, Arthur. I think there might be something in here. <laughs> This tiny little sack. Got it. Good. Now let's get out of here. Damn, we're lost here. Come on, let's see if that gate's open. It's locked. We'll have to go 
back the way we came. Damn it. Come on. We best stick to the side. I'm not sure why I didn't try that gate back there. Lucky I ain't a religious man. Let's just get back there, collect our side of the deal. You all right? He best not be playing games with us. He almost certainly is. Well, let's just see. Keep your head. Act normal. How's he even gonna know? Well, you took your time. Jack! Where's your host? Ah! Like I said, you <laughs> took your time. Ah! I'm glad to see you. Let's get going. What a fine man. Hey, friend. Uh, thank Mr. Look, Bronte you all for right? everything. Yeah, I'm fine. Come on. You know, Arthur, Mr. Bronte has invited us to a garden party at the mayor's house. <laughs> and us, just simple country boys. Let's go. We have a new camp. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna love it. Simple country. Boys. All right, let's get this boy back to his mother. You I'm sure you're okay, home. son? I'm fine. Papa Bronte said you'd come for me. I'm, I'm sorry. Why did he just what let for? him call that guy Papa? For that. For taking so long. I had a fun time. I had my own room with a big bed and a toy box. And lots of books. Did they do anything to you? Have you ever had spaghetti? What? What's that? It's food. It looks like worms, but it's delicious. Spaghetti's right? bad. Papa Bronte teach me lots of Italian words. Don't call him that, please. Do you know cavallo? That means horse. And pantafola? That's a slipper. A slipper? They gave me two pairs. One for day and one for night. Well, I'm just glad you're all right. Oh, yes. But I can't wait to see Mama. Did she miss me? She sure did. Like you wouldn't know. You had a nice night then. Most enjoyable. Well, the man's an intolerable blowhard, but he stocks a fine bar. How did you fellers get on? Any problems? A whole heap of them. We about doubled the population of that graveyard. You know... I thought I heard gunshots, but the gramophone was playing. 
Unbelievable. Each to their strengths, Arthur. I went in there with a gun and left with a party invitation. So, what'd you say this was? A garden party? A big gala at the mayor's house. I'm told every rich fool in Lemoyne will be there. Bronte? Oh, he'll be there too. Seems to more or less run this city. At least, that's the way he sees it. Could open up some opportunities for us. It's been a chaotic few days. But we can finally move forward now. Get the money we need and disappear. Hey, they're back! I think I see Jack! Abigail! Abigail! We got you, your son, everything! We got him! Mama! He's fine! I'm fine, Mama. Steak bread is good. <laughs> Italian food. Did you ever eat that? Come here, you silly boy. Uh, <laughs> you got him. You got my son back. Judge Arthur, thank you. Thank you. I got my son back! Jack! 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 How are you, boy? I'm fine, thanks. Everything's okay now. Abigail? Can I go play now? Ah, so, well, we met Mr. Bronte. <laughs> he is uh, quite a character. Is he now? You ever meet an Italian strong man before? <laughs> Not outside of a circus. Well, let me tell you all about him. John, you go be with your family. Arthur, thank you. Boys, we got some work to do. Interesting work. But first, let's have a drink. <laughs> we got Jack back. <laughs> well, I'm gonna smoke this cigarette. You. Thank you, Arthur. I... <clears throat> I don't know how to say it. Thank you. I understand. Come on. Do as Dutch says. <clears throat> Go be with your family. Don't gear. Dang it. Don't gear. Where's my other mission at? What the? Okay, I guess I don't have one. Make some room for John there. Come on, are we celebrating? Good to have you back here. We missed you. Hey, hey, how about a song? How are you? Javier, play us away. We ain't gonna get drunk here. Not a fan of this music. It makes no sense for me. No, I don't know. I couldn't say I couldn't listen to that. Terrible. What are you doing over here? Hi, uh, folks. I like that new pistol. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. How are you doing? I feel wonderful. He likes my new gun. I like my new gun, too. I gotta go all the way upstairs to go to sleep. Unless my room is here. Is this my room? It is. Alright. My room is ugly. What is this? Oh. Ohio. Go to bed. There's a music sign above the bed. Oh, this ain't my bed. 
Whose bedroom was this? I better not to grow no hair when I'm in here. This is my room. Dang, he was shaved with a straight razor. Eight out of ten, you beard. This is how garbage my mustache looks. My mustache looks like that. make him look like an absolute idiot, dude. My beard looks nothing like this. The bro's got a much better beard than me. Alright, well. Oh, look at that, you can see in the mirror, look. Why is he so stiff? Three hours? I shouldn't grow no hair in three hours. My dear Arthur, I hope this letter finds you well. I wanted to thank you for your help with Jamie. He and Daddy are still arguing, but I understand that Jamie is thinking about going back to college. Whatever happens, I believe you saved his life and we are all truly grateful. Oh, Arthur, I have made such a mess of my life time and again. Why can I not change and be the woman I want to be? Why couldn't you change and be a man and put down all those fantasies that shroud your judgment? Life is very confusing, and I see now that I'm not very good at it. I'm afraid we've got ourselves into another mess. It's not my fault, but I need your help. I'm staying at the Hotel Grand in San Denis. Oh, Arthur. I know it is wrong to ask you, but I have nobody else, and for what we once had together, I beg of you, even though I am ashamed to do so, yours, Mary. That makes me mad. She's one of them that always, they always asking me, they won't, they won't just do something for them. They don't care about you. They just want to use you. Well, she write me no letters just to check on me. Huh? So what do you think of this place? You folks sure move around a lot. Yep, that's how it goes. Right, I want to go look at a gator or something. Hey, look, we got a dog. You okay, boy? <laughs> Come here. Had a hula curve. Kane. I don't like that name. Hey, Lenny. That last lug of whiskey was a mistake. How have you been, Arthur? Okay. You seem well, Reverend. Dang. Yes. Well, maybe. I've been okay before, but then. I make a fool of myself again. <laughs> so do I. 
I went into town. So did I. If I was still a, a religious man, I'd say there are too many Catholics there, but I've, I've given up on all that. Oh. <laughs> Me too, Reverend. I met a monk there. Kindly fellow. Took me back to my days in college. Is there any purpose to this conversation, Reverend? Not really. But he said the strangest things about all manner of bad things happening in town. Bad things happening in a city. <laughs> Who would have thought it possible? Well, maybe if you're there, you could have a chat with him. He's hanging about outside the marketplace, collecting alms for the poor. Sounds thrilling. Terrible. Anyway. Hello, Mary Beth. Oh, how are you, Arthur? Fine. How are you? Um, well, I'm well, I think. It's been quite a run we've had, but, but we're still alive. Mm. So, no regrets? Regrets for what? Well, for joining this band of maniacs. If you're a girl without means in this world, life is very scary. You boys care for me before no one cared for me. Well, life weren't very nice, Arthur. Not after Mama got typhoid, and that was a long time ago. Sure. What about you? <clears throat> I heard you ran into that Mary girl. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And? You got me thinking how that all ended. Long time ago now. What happened? <laughs> well, she didn't love me enough, I guess. Or I wouldn't change. Huh. Well, she was a fool then, Arthur. Well, she put a lot of good years in on an outlaw. She definitely was a fool. In these books, life seems so simple, but in reality, I, I can't make head nor tail of it. Mr. Morgan! Mr. Morgan, we have a problem. A real problem. It's Tilly. What? She's oh. been taken by them Foreman brothers she used to run with. Come along! The Foreman brothers? What are they doing here? Well, I don't know what they've been doing here, but I can tell you what they're going to be doing here. Dying. Sure. Do we need more guns? You and I can handle this, Arthur. Where are we heading? She... I'll tell you on the way. How does she find Just out? Just get about... going. She told me she was worried that our camp was near a safe house that gang she ran with used from time to time. And you told Dutch? No. She spoke to me in confidence. I suppose I didn't think it would be a problem. Now it is. Oh, yes. What do they want with her anyway? I think I saw one of the foremans hassling her in Valentine. Yes. They probably followed us down here. You don't know what happened? She killed one of them for good reason, but... Clearly, they don't see it that way. Tilly? Yes. Young Tilly Jackson isn't as sweet and innocent as you might think. But like I say, she was defending herself. She fled and fell in with us right after that. I just hope we can get to her in time. It's not too far. If they touched a single hair on that girl's head, I will eviscerate the sons of bitches. See? You do care, Miss Grimshaw. Okay. I think that's the place up ahead. Yeah. I think there's a guard. I'll deal with him. Whoa. What you want? Kind sir, we're lost and in need of some help. Now get out of here. Oh, I see that kindly face to yours. And I know that for the right inducement, a gentleman such as yourself could be mighty kind. Now get out of here. Oh, now you keep saying that, but you don't mean nothing by I it. I said... You said your... <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Get in there and find our girl. Shit! What the hell you think you're doing? It's okay, Miss Tilly. Now, let's get you out of here. Hold on. I thought there was... I... Yeah, it don't 
matter what you thought. It's okay. All right, let's go. Oh, come along, miss. Thank you, both of you. What happened? It was Anthony Foreman. He thinks he owns me. I remember. Where is he? He went out hunting or something. There were five of them, I think. Well, we killed those fellas there. There they are. Come on. Taylor, grab that gun. Anyone approaches, shoot them. Oh, don't worry. I'll be just fine. Now catch that bastard. <laughs> It is Let's that guy right. threatening Come on. Time. to spell it right. The funny bastard. <laughs> Who are you running with, damn coward? Oh, shit. She didn't tell you? She didn't tell me nothing. No. Oh, this rope is cutting into me. Don't feel so good when you're the one tied up, does it? She killed my goddamn cousin. Oh, don't worry. You'll be seeing him soon enough. What are you gonna do with me? Watch you. All right, all right, damn it. All right, here's your man. Bring him here. Dump him on the ground here. I want to get a good look at this monster. Bro, it looked like he about dutied his pants. So he's still alive then? Ah. I guess. You see this girl? You leave her alone. She killed my cousin. Your goddamn cousin had it coming, Anthony Foreman. I don't care if she shot your daddy and cooked your mama for breakfast. She's mine. She ate yours. You know, a friend of mine, he always says, <clears throat> revenge is a fool's game. Now, you want all your boys dead? She had her reasons. We was family, Tilly Jackson. You Foreman boys ain't no kind of family I want. Kill him, Arthur! You want that? I want him to go away and tell the remaining of his cousins and the clowns he rides with to leave me alone! Now, you think you can do that, Anthony? Or should I slit your throat and just save us all the bother? I'll leave you alone. History is done. History is never done. It's your call, Arthur. But I'd slit his throat. Go on. Finish the bastard off. You know my choice. It is hard to make a choice, because I'm trying to be a good man. But... Sadly, I agree with you. <laughs> Sorry, partner. We can't take no chances with the likes of you. Yeah. I didn't lose honor, so that's great. 
Look at this horse. Oh, I got it. Why can't I look at it? What's going on here? Let's move. Get real mad. Ah. Oh, is there a stable nearby? Mosaic down that camp. I think this is gonna be the closest stable. Well, there's one up uh, I'll go to I'll go to town. Please, friend. You gotta help me out here. Come on, please. I'm about to There you go. Oh. Uh, thank God. Oh, well, I waited to hear that noise for so long. Yeah, I bet. I, I wish I could give you some money. Well, you know, I might have something of interest. Some fat feller and his wife had a pig farm uh, northeast of Rhodes. Near the border with Roanoke. Word is, he's got piles of money. You sure I'm the right person for this sort of information? I ain't saying nothing. Do with it what you will. stable so that I can um, make it my horse so I don't lose it. Doing all right? If you want me to keep that overnight, there's room in the stable. No oh, papers, huh? Well, I can't give you full price on account of that might be stolen. Hey, uh. Alright. Oh, they got other horses? Yeah, he does. I ain't worried about that, though. Wish more folks took care of their horses like you. Come back soon. It's a good horse. Checking to see if there's a haircut. There is. Good. Good. And then there's two. No, 
there's only one closed. Everything here, butcher, anything. Okay. Yep. Let's go to Hosea now. What's he want here? Oh, he just needs to speak with you. Gotcha. What's he doing this for? Maggie, nail two, silver dollar. of it. Well, I haven't mastered that fit. You? <laughs> you have more fun than anyone. Do I? Okay. <laughs> Maybe I do. Hosea? Hey, Arthur. Come on! If we're gonna make it to this party, we yeah. sure as shit better clean up a little. So we're doing this? Oh, yeah. Old friend Dutch Vandalin is finally showing his true colors. Social climbing. <laughs> Old Senor Bronte, that horrendous snake, has invited us to the ball, Cinderella. So my suggestion is we go and get you a gown. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Time to go and get a gown. <laughs> Utterly. I ain't never been to a ball in my life. Nor have I, if I am being honest. I used to quite often. There could be fine pickets. Oh, no, 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 no pickpocketing. We are here to make real contact. What kind of contact? Well, I don't know. We'll find what we can. All I know for sure is we are going to a party at the mayor's house, and the guest of honor is the worst crook in town. <laughs> I'm sure that we will find something. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen, Luca, I'm afraid the mayor does not allow guns at official functions after last year's incident. Luca here will take you to Mr. Bronte. I believe he is expecting you. Follow me, gentlemen. This way, please, gentlemen. Senior Bronte will be so pleased that you made it. We are honored to be here. <laughs> That's wonderful, wonderful. That. Come, come, this way. Uh, what a beautiful evening it shall be. Those pants uh, don't Mr. Brante is a very good friend with the mayor. Good evening, Pierre. Senor Napoli, 
As long as the man behaves himself, you know. Uh, Mr. Brante, he has a uh, thing, you know. Uh, respect. Jose, Phil, you join the party. We'll meet you out back after we pay our respects to Senor Brante. <laughs> come, come. We'll meet you out in the balcony when you're done. Some terrible paintings on the wall. Check see if I have gloves on. <laughs> ah, the angry cowboys! You have arrived! And you've washed for the prima volta questo mese, senza dubbio. <laughs> this is quite a party you've invited us to. Yes, quite something. Although I'm not quite sure what. <laughs> so, this is Sandini High Society. Yes, apparently so. And all these people, these are friends of yours, <laughs> Senor Bronte. No, 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 not quite, not quite. But they certainly are afraid of me. Like that one. See that wretch? He's the mayor. <laughs> Henri Lemieux. <laughs> He'll do anything for a dollar, and I mean anything. Politics is a foul business. Yes. Oh, and that one too. That is Alberto Fusar. He owns a sugar plantation out on the island, and he... Comes here to whore and despoil himself. <laughs> oh, oh, and that, that is Hobart Crowley, a, a Confederate major in the war. I mean, hero, they say, but that is his, his very young wife. I mean, a young mistress, that's the natural order of things, yes, but a young wife is unseemly. Oh, oh, the Redskins. <laughs> I have no sympathy for them, because whoever is stupid enough to get tricked by the Americans, no, they get what they deserve, huh? <laughs> yes, and a letter to the mayor. Oh, yeah, that'll save you. <laughs> and that... That is Hector Fellows. This self-righteous newspaper man. Maybe, maybe you will kill him for me one day. <laughs> well, we're not paid killers as such. Not in cold blood, anyway. I did not know you were so particular that uh, you wouldn't help a friend. Oh, I'm willing to help in any way I can, uh, within reason. <laughs> I'm going to pretend to understand what that means. I meant no offense, sir. I'm not taken. None taken! <laughs> <laughs> All these vulgar people. They hate me. <laughs> non vedo l'ora di guardarti morire. <laughs> well, uh, it has been wonderful conversing with you, but I can tell that you are very busy and I won't waste any more of your time. Yes, yes, yes. Go enjoy yourselves and mingle with this vulgar scum. It'll make you long for the days when you could shoot each other and screw cows out on the open range. <laughs> Those sure were the days. Good day, gentlemen. Mm, good day to you. But before you go, what uh, exactly are your plans here? Well, we've not made any... Well... We, we are going to need some money. Money... Yes, of course. Well, there's, there's money at the trolley station. They keep a lot of cash there in the day. Now, I could not involve myself in such uh, matters. But you... Pff, as a guest, yes, as my guest, bah, do it, huh? <laughs> okay, good day, gentlemen. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, ragazzi, adesso il vino buono. Si. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you to the party, gentlemen, if you'll kindly follow me. Terrible. I hate his stupid top hat. Also hate his vest. That vest is just Gentlemen, enjoy your evening and welcome once again to Saint Denis. Ciao ciao. Gentlemen, let's go ingratiate ourselves. Okay, that vest is so bad. Look at it. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. Go find the mayor if you can and stay out of trouble. And steal nothing unless it's information. Of course.
sir. How's things? Good evening. How are you? Hello. Good, Good evening. evening, all. Evening, friend. Evening, folks. How are you all doing? Hello. Hello. Hey, partner. Good evening. Hello, sir. I did no such thing. But, Mr. Lemieux, I suggested that all of us as Americans had a duty to take care of people living in this land. And that extends to Saint Denis. It ain't complex, Lemieux. And only an idiot like you, buddy, would try to make it so. I will not deny idiocy, so, but perhaps now is not the time. <laughs> Typical pansy! You are drunk, Ferdinand. I'm not drunk, you fool. But this man, this man loves darkies. <laughs> hey, you are pretty drunk. Yeah. What say you and me cool off? Come on, sleep it down. off. Sit down and calm down. Count, thank you, sir. My pleasure. Henri Lemieux. I hope you're enjoying my party. The mayor. Allegedly. There's quite a place you got here. <laughs> it's not mine, and the city is horribly in debt, but we can still put on a good show. Do you know Evelyn Miller? My lord. A writer? Well, we seem to have another deranged drunkard on our hands. Shall we? Oh! oh. oh. Excuse me, father. Excuse me, father. Uh, monsieur, please. please. Mr. Cornwall was quite insistent, I'm afraid. Uh, he shouted down the telephone for several minutes. Mr. Cornwall is a horse's ass and a bad horse. I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, it's not your fault. I'm a fool for trusting him. I'll come in and sign it in a minute. Let me enjoy the fireworks. Of course. Please say something about Cornwall. Yes. Find out what. Sure. These NPCs are so amazed by fireworks. That's what they do in real life, too. Sorry. I managed to get myself turned around somehow. Don't mind me. I didn't know. I thought I was, I thought I was supposed to like, actually fall on the I didn't know what he was like. Hi there. How do you do, sir? Hello, ma'am. How do you do, ma'am? Hello, sir. sir. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. How are you? Hello, my dear. How you doing? I like to miss the new out of kind face. No problem. Everything's fine. We have the place well secured. Good. Mr. Bronte has a habit of wandering about and reading whatever he likes. <laughs> We're watching him as men like hearts. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Everything taken care of? The telephone, it keeps ringing. The mayor said he will sign later. What's he doing? <sighs> Marie! Marie! Find that little reprobate Jip and beat him! I will not have standard slip in this house. Have you lost your mind? I said, have you lost your mind? Come here. Come here. Look at me. Look at me. Who do you think you are? This area is not meant for the likes of you. You know this. Standards in this house are slipping. This is a final warning to you, miss. A final warning. Now get out of my sight. 
Not for the likes of her. What is why? What does he mean? That sounds like a racist thing to say. Expect me to just come in here and do this? Master Leviticus Cornwall. Top secret. Extremely confidential. Very interesting. This town is a waste of time. Maybe not. Arthur? Gentlemen, I think we're done here. What did you find out? There's plenty of money moves through here, of course, and I, I think I found out how we can grab some of it. A big bank. Real one, I mean. But not yet. A city bank? Maybe. And a stuffed one. We're gonna leave. That could be the one thing we need. There's also that trolley car station Senor Bronte told us about, and I heard about a high-stakes poker game. Come on. Here comes Lenny. All right. Let's get in. <coughs> Go home! <sighs> I never felt so awkward in all my life. All them folk are so pleased with themselves. Oh, high society's pigeon shit. If you ask me, it's more like torture. Well, that's sort of the point, isn't it? Let the people torture themselves. Here's them papers I took. <sighs> Anybody see you take this? I don't think so. Hmm. I might have an idea. Let me think on it. Throw that Mickey Mouse gloves on. <laughs> Interesting times. <laughs> I guess. So what's next? Dancing lessons? Deportment? More along the lines of armed robbery. Jose is handling reconnaissance on the bank. He and Abigail are gonna run some distractions, see how the law reacts. Good. Oh, and I spoke to Evelyn Miller. Fine man. Here helping the Indian chief we saw. Yeah, I met him too, with the mayor. He's lobbying officials in San Denis on their behalf. Maybe we could help. Maybe. Now, I think there's a lot of money on the riverboat. A lot of money. And Trelawney, he's investigating for us. He says to meet him at the tailors. Okay. One big score down here, Arthur, and we disappear. We are almost heading home. Where is home? I don't know. Exactly. But I can smell it. I'm gonna go investigate this trolley thing old Bronte was talking about. Okay. <sighs> Your horse won't follow you if you're in camp. That's kind of big dumb. I gotta slow walk all the way over there. Hi, Jack. I'm hungry this morning. Let me put some clothes on. Morning, dear. Good morning, Arthur. Yeah, okay, boy. 
Ranger. These raiders are insane. Wait. Get out of here before more of them show up. What kind of horse is this? This is showing up yellow. Evelyn Miller. Howdy, fellas. Morning. So I guess it is a uh, fire. Excuse me. Pardon me. I think I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna look at what how long I've been going. 